so here we are, last few weeks of January, early February, mm, skating, sledding with the kids, romantic winter walks, snow days, cozy evenings with a cup of tea and a book. Love it. Yes to all of these. Um, but, you know, try as I might, like all those good things, I can't help but sometimes getting a touch of the winter blues from time to time, especially like walking home from work in the evening when it's so dark and cold and I'm just pining for the warmth and the hope of spring or those gray days where the sky is just gray for like a whole week, even though Chris has actually been teaching me to just love a gray day. So working on that, Chris. Anyway, you've probably heard of the acronym SAD, which stands for, see if I can get this right, Seasonal Affective Disorder. So, I mean, you can do a little Googling and you'll find out all kinds of, you know, read all kinds of columns and blogs and this and that about it. Um, and most of the advice to, like, help with SAD is um, advice for, for self-care. So, like, light treatments, making sure you eat right, exercise, reduce stress. Um, I believe in all those things, and they're all good, although I haven't tried the light treatment yet, so I should, should actually look into that. One thing I've been missing from the list I've read, though, is humility. Um, at first blush, humility seems like an odd remedy for feeling down about the weather. Like, you kind of think instinctively that humility is something that you would want, a virtue that you'd want when you're, like, performing on the highest level or you know, you're, everything's going well, you're flying high. But humility may be something we need most when we're absorbed um, with our own problems and lack of joy in life. Um, and one of my favorite authors, C.S. Lewis, talks about this and he says, humility is not thinking less of ourselves, it is thinking of ourselves less which I think is just so good. When I read that, I was like, yes, go C.S. Lewis. <laughs> when we're thinking of ourselves less, which often takes a conscious effort, mind you, to think of others more, um, we get more of an objective view of life. And this isn't attempting, this isn't about attempting to console ourselves that we have it so much better, you know, than person X in a third world country because such a thinking is still ultimately self-centered because you, yourself is still in the equation. Um, it's about really like, banishing thoughts of self and focusing on the world outside of us. Um, mind you, this is something that I am still working on, work in progress. Um, but I was thinking um, a friend of mine um, told me once that she sometimes wakes in the middle of the night and can't get back to sleep. I'm very thankful that I do not have this problem. Um, and for her, this time can be a time when she fears and um, she's worried about the uncertainties um, in the future and all these things kind of just surface in her mind. And I read somewhere about this having to do with your body being at its lowest metabolic rate and level of defense or some sciencey sounding explanation. I'm probably like saying it all wrong. <laughs> um, but in Psalms, it's more straightforwardly referred to as the terror that stalks at night. Anyway, um, my friend said that the biggest help for her in those times was to consciously think of people she knows or situations she's aware of and hold those in prayer. And it takes an effort, she told me, but doing this service or forgetting her own worries and making space to pray for others, she can find peace and get back to sleep. So I was actually really touched by those thoughts that she's had and also just like wanted to share them with you. So I guess fight against sad with humility and also turn on all the lights. I think I'm going to do that now. Oh, these lights are already on. <laughs> oh, but I like this. Or light a candle. Okay, anyways, bye. <laughs>